referring to the how to eco video Alst asked me hey heaven thanks for the eco tutorial can you do the same for pigeons short video i'm not asking for much and yes i can so here we go we first take a look at the t1 power generator the t1 power generator costs 75 mass and it generates 20 power per second everybody knows right and this 75 mass of cost for the T1 power generator is going to be our reference value for the comparison. So if we take a look at the T2 power generator and we ask ourselves, how much power per second do I get if I invest 75 mass, which is the cost of the T1 power generator, into this T2 power generator? And you're going to get 31 power per second, right? That's around 50% more efficient than the T1 power generator. Next on the list would be the hydro. If you invest a 75 mass into a hydro, then you're going to get 47 power out of it per second, meaning the hydro is 2.5 times more efficient than the T1 power generator. And it is around 50% more efficient than the T2 power generator. So if you guys reclaim your hydro because you have T2 power, that's bad. Stop doing that, right? The hydro is going to be the best source of power until you have T3 power, right? So let's take a look at T3 power. If we invest 75 mass into T3 power, we are going to get 58 power per second. Which is good, right? Three times as efficient as T1 power, two times as efficient as T2 power, and around 33% more efficient than the hydro. So these are the power generators. And next we look at ACUs. So again, we have the comparison for the current patch environment and for the patch that is currently in the pipeline, the beta patch that is going to release soon. So let's first take a look at the current patch, which is 3658. And in this patch environment, you are going to get 41 power per second for each 75 mass you put into the RAS. And for ARAS, it's exactly the same value, right? RAS and ARAS generate the same and also cost the same. So the current RAS and ARAS is in between T2 power and the hydro in terms of efficiency. Right? So you should even keep the hydro after you have RAS, right? If you just look for power efficiency. Just saying hydro is great. For the patch 3660, the current beta patch, the situation changes drastically the efficiency of the Aeon RAS and ARAS is going to be reduced to 26 power per second for each 75 mass invested into it. That places it exactly in between the T1 and the T2 power generator in terms of power efficiency. Don't get me wrong, the Aeon RAS is still good because it also generates mass and it is quite easy to upgrade since you don't have to invest so much into build power compared to building lots of T2 power generators, right? So a couple of engineers, T1 engineers, assisting the ACU and the build power of the ACU itself are going to be enough to finish the RAS. But for T2 power, you need a T2 engineer and an entire cloud of T1 engineers to get it in a reasonable timing, right? But that makes RAS still very strong but it is less power efficient than it used to be. For Seraphim, the power efficiency of the RAS is on par with a T2 power generator. The Seraphim RAS generates 30 power per second for each 75 mass invested into it. So pretty much the same as the T2 power generator. For UEF, they don't have a RAS, so they get some extra power out of their RAS. And their power income is going to be at 38 power per second for each 75 mass invested into it. The Cybern RAS is going to generate 41 power per second for each 
75 mass invested into it, and that also places it, just like the UEF, in between the T2 power and the hydro. Okay? Now, we still need to talk about support issues, and we still need to talk about examples for a agency. So let's start with the support ACU. The Seraphim support ACU doesn't have RAS upgrade because the Seraphim support ACUs are very good fighting units and they are mainly intended as a combatant. As such, the RAS is quite power inefficient, or rather the non-existence of the RAS. The Seraphim get some extra income for their support ACU, which tries to make up a little bit for the lack of the RAS upgrade. So an unupgraded support ACU normally produces 20 power per second and the Seraphim one produces 200 power per second. Okay? But if we take the mass cost into account and we ask ourselves if I invest the cost of a T1 power generator, namely 75 mass, into the Seraphim support ACU, how much power am I getting? The answer is 7 power per second for each 75 mass spent into it. So it is less efficient than the T1 power generator, by far, right? And for all the other factions, you have the RAS upgrades. And these support ACUs are going to generate 12 power per second for each 75 mass put into them. So they're in between the very power inefficient Seraphim support ACU and the also very power inefficient T1 power generator. But of course, you don't usually build these for power, right? You build these because they generate mass and power. They are a unit that can construct stuff. And they are mobile and quite survivable. These are the reasons you build these, right? And now we take a look at adjacency. I could talk forever about adjacency, but I just have one example, probably the most prominent example for adjacency right here. I hope you all ring your Omni radar with T1 power and each T1 power generator around uh, an Omni radar is going to give you 145 power per second for each 75 mass invested into it. Right? The cost of the Omni is disregarded in this equation because you're going to have the Omni anyways because you need it. Right? But the agency is going to make this T1 power generators extremely efficient. So these are going to be 2.5 times as efficient as T3 power, right? Which is crazy. That's why agency is so important. So I hope this video helped. And if you have any other requests, please let me know. Good luck.